<laughs> so here's the great thing about this goddamn scene. Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because we want to feel what it's like to be essential. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting a socially responsible 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend <laughs> Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. So you know what's stupid? <laughs> what's stupid? Intelligence. <laughs> if you think about it, don't think about it. I have, don't think about it. I have it. seen a whole movie that reinforces that point. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> We've seen a lot of movies yeah, that this true. one no, directly says yeah. it. Yep, exactly. <laughs> and sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Pretty good, Noah. You know who's disposable? Women. <laughs> <laughs> Interchangeable. Yep. Wow. Yeah. You're yeah. just going to get right into it. Yeah. <laughs> Whoo. All right. And speaking of which, well, no, no, that doesn't work very well at all. <laughs> not uh, a great never, intro. You know what? Never mind. Never mind. I'm here to argue with Eli's <laughs> weird persona. <laughs> there we go. We also have a special guest masochist today. Caitlin Durante is a stand up comedian, a writer, and the co host of the Bechdel cast. Caitlin, welcome to God Awful Movies. Thank you so much for having me. I am delighted to be here. Like I said before we started recording, usually we only get that before people watch the movie, so it's so <laughs> nice to hear that now. Oh. <laughs> so if you could, for, for our listeners who haven't heard your stuff before, can you give them an idea what your podcast is about and what inspired it? Sure. So it's called The Bechtel Cast, and as the name might imply, it's inspired by The Bechtel Test. And for anyone who doesn't know what that is, it's a kind of media metric that requires that two female characters in a movie have to speak to each other about something other than a man. And ideally, we know what those characters' names are. So, okay. We... <laughs> I'd never heard that last edition, but yeah, that's The big. name one, is a, that's an amazing <laughs> that they had to add that to be like, yeah, also, come on. Right. <laughs> well, names, it's, please. It's already such a low bar. And then they're like, there's like a caveat where it's like, oh, it's helpful if we know the characters' names. Because sometimes like a movie might pass the Bechdel test when like the one female character who's like has any importance to the narrative talks to like a, a waitress at a restaurant for seven seconds. And that right, right, yeah. <laughs> might pass the Bechdel test. I mean, technically two, two girls looking at another one and saying, look at her, but that passed the Bechdel test. So yeah, right. You, you gotta, yeah, you gotta. So, so we use that test just kind of as a way to jump off a jumping off point to examine um, just the treatment and representation of women in movies. Because, you know, as a student of film, as a fan of film, I started noticing more and more that, uh, you know, men be making movies. And mm -hmm. um, <laughs> men, really? men, men, men be not including women in those movies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, when they do decide to include women, sometimes men be not respecting those women in their movies. Generally speaking. Well, actually, Caitlin, <laughs> uh, hate to explain to you on the air. This is all a joke. This is all a joke, everybody. Please. <laughs> but yeah, women don't negotiate as hard to make movies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is so, jokes. This is all jokes. Yes, so no, yes, wait. Yes. I I want to I want to follow up on that. And, and we've got a lot of bad movie to get to, so I don't want to derail this too much. But I, I but I've got to ask Heath, Eli, what's the last movie that you saw that wasn't directed by a woman that passed the Bechdel test? Can either of you recall? No idea. Cats. <laughs> 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 All right, wait. I think I think you're right. It's you're actually right. fucking cats. Yeah. <laughs> was, Does female was, cats count as passing the Bechdel test? I think so. They are like personified. They're human. Like, yeah. 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 Okay. Cats, we knew their names. Exactly. Yeah, we knew a couple of their names. I was gonna. I, here's here's my honest answer. Iron Man three. <laughs> There's a scene in Iron Man three where Pepper Potts talks to the bad guy lady, and then and they're not talking about Tony Stark. And I was I remember watching the movie and going, yeah. hey. Well, you know. The thing is, you didn't know bad guy lady's name just now and called I, her well, bad but, guy but lady. I, but I knew it, well, in, in the movie, like as a movie viewer, <laughs> she's a named character. Yeah. All right. So, and I imagine you might have a more recent answer than I do. Caitlin, what's the last uh, like major Hollywood movie that you saw that wasn't directed by a woman that passed? Oh, well, I was, my first answer was going to be, well, was Portrait of a Lady on Fire? I have to imagine that was directed by a woman. And I'm actually embarrassed that I don't know that. Oh, I have no idea. Because that one, that movie passes the Bechdel test in like every scene. 
much like the adventures of Chris Fable. <laughs> um, just kidding. And <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. I I would I don't remember the time before the quarantine, so I honestly have no idea. Oh right, right. Yeah, okay. like no, that's that. fair. <laughs> that's fair. All right. So he we we've already hinted around a little bit. Uh, tell us officially what will we be breaking down today? We watched the adventures of Chris Fable. It's the story of a. Chris figure um, <laughs> guided by his faith, his friend Faith, yep. whose name is Faith, and he tries to overcome the influence of an evil prince of dark, darkitude <laughs> and find the celestial city, a real municipality that may or may not represent something else. We'll find out. <laughs> It's like they were trying to avoid a copyright strike on YouTube with this thing. <laughs> <laughs> you can have the Bible, guys. It's, it's all really, you're good. Yeah, the Bible's in public domain, right? Pretty oh, sure. sure. I'm pretty yeah. sure you can just quote straight from that fucker. I hope so. We have a whole segment yeah. on our other show. <laughs> and Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you loved The Pilgrim's Progress, but... Sitting backwards on a chair and reading it doesn't seem to be doing the trick with reaching these keys. <laughs> you will love this movie. It's it's a Christian youth pastor doing 10-year-old slang the movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's terrifying what they think is attractive to kids in this. We're going to get to a whole <laughs> segment of that. It was my goddamn nightmare. Oh, my <laughs> God. Yep. You know what they like is bug guts. <laughs> All right, so and and Caitlin, I hate to make you like kind of one dimensional at the, in the intro here, but how did this movie do vis a vis the Bechdel test? Passes in every single scene. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Knew it. I think I'm pretty sure it does not pass. There are scenes where there are more than two women on screen together, and if they do talk to each other, they I think are talking about our hero Chris Fable, but I don't even know if they even interact at any point, honestly. I think, that, so the only thing I can come up with is that hope and faith meet at one point at the end and say hi to each other when Chris introduces them. Right. Which, like, I would not want to count that as passing the Bechdel test. <laughs> I'll say this. More female characters in this movie die than oh. are named. <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. I think you might be right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, I, here's how weird my fucking job is. When it comes to low budget modern day retellings of Pilgrim's Progress using unprofessional actors and an over reliance on bad CGI, this is the second worst one I've ever seen. That's yes, so it is. Depressing. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh. our life. All right. So, is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Best worst fat pony. Yo, fat yeah, how pony. dare you? How dare this, you, Ethan? Oh my God. This <laughs> thick pony is fucking adorable. It's like nayward fat. It's just like <laughs> mm, grunting and sweating and proudly showing off its big, beautiful form. Best character in the movie. It's not even close. Hands down. We'll yeah. right? <laughs> no, no, that was good. That was a solid one. I knew somebody was going to have that one. Caitlin, you got any best worsts? Yeah, I would say best, worst, ancillary characters who appear in one scene and then never show up again. Oh, <laughs> oh women? Yeah, uh, women. Well, then you also have some, you know, the traveling salesman. You've got the man in the yeah, cage. Yeah, fat pony. You've got the, the, fat pony. the fat pony. You've got the little park ranger child. The list Oh, God, goes. I forgot oh, about what him. What the <laughs> fuck was up with this? That's, that's a real character. There's a... Child park rain. It makes nothing makes any sense at any moment. Well, it's so, nuts. So I wrote over and over in my notes. I was like, wow, this made a lot more sense in Pilgrim's Progress, which means that this movie makes even less sense than Pilgrim's <laughs> Progress. Did I watch Pilgrim's Progress? I don't remember. No, that might have no, been one of those I missed. Yeah, we I, were, they we all run it. together. I have no idea. Yeah, that's the one we, that we did with Thomas. I had to do the rhyming intro. It was a whole thing. So, okay, I know this is idiosyncratic because these are dynamically inserted, but I'm going with best, worst YouTube ads. Huh. Guys, I got ads for the Epic Times. It's, the, <laughs> it's this weird-ass, crazy, pro-Trump conspiracy theory newspaper started by a Chinese cult. It's the 
craziest fucking shit. I was so looking, but you could see the little thing. It'll tell you on the bottom where the ads are going to pop up. I got so excited when I was getting close to them. They were <laughs> bizarre. So that was fun. If you get a chance to check those out. Okay. All I got was the Coors ads telling you to stay home. <laughs> <laughs> so you'd be in the middle of being like, we're about to go on a big adventure. We'll meet again, my friends. Empty footage of a bar. <laughs> and I'd be like, ah, oh, man, I wish this ad was over so I could get back to this Christian movie about how I'm going to die in the rapture. <laughs> I was going to go with best worst temptations of the devil. Now, look, <laughs> we have seen a lot of temptations of the devil. Caitlin. You're on episode 243 of our podcast, not counting bonus episodes. Uh -huh. I've seen a lot of devil temptations. I'm going to go ahead and say it. Neon 1980s video games, lamest temptation of the devil we've seen yet. <laughs> I got to be honest. I would have stopped at that thing. I would like that would have gone <laughs> yeah, in. No, I would at least go. I would have gone in. I've gone into places like that. Yeah. <laughs> I've been on some road trips. I mean, there's virtual reality surfing for crying out loud. Right. Uh, yeah. Fuck yeah, which is Come what on. I was going to be doing if I wasn't recording with you guys right now. <laughs> Surfing in a lake of fire. Cool. <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what. We're going to need to find a lot of new ways of saying, and then he puts one foot in front of the other when we're describing this movie. So we're going to pause for a quick thesaurus <laughs> break. But when we come back, we'll dive into all the plot false starts that are the adventures of Chris Fable. All right, everyone, welcome to the first ever writer's meeting for the adventures of Chris Fable. All right. All right, Chris Fable. Now, as I'm sure many of you know, movies like Harry Potter and Percy Jackson have never been a bigger threat to our kids. Yes, question. Sorry, didn't those books come out years ago? I mean, yes, but the movies, they're just wrapping up now. Oh, uh, OK. Right. So. There's never been a more important time for us to present a Christian alternative. I mean, what's so great about those kids' books anyway? What do they have that we don't? Uh, memorable characters. Uh, engaging story. Another one. Lessons and a moral compass that don't feel mm -hmm. like they're based on Bronze Age ideology. Uh, nope. Another nope. One. That's yeah. not it. Special effects and shiny fonts. And guess what? I got both of them. Turns out my nephew here is a real whiz with the CGI, aren't you, Tyler, aren't you? Um, I have Adobe on my, on my pewter. You hear that? Adobe on his pewter, regular Bill Gates. He's practically Jewish. Wait, what? Now, what say we rip the cover off of Pilgrim's Progress and let Tyler get to work? We'll be finished with this bad boy by lunch. I guess so. All right, let's see. Chipotle? All right, see ya, Tyler. Wait, uh, guys... What do you want special effects to like be? What's the what's the plot of the movie? Don't worry, Ken. I know you'll do great. Uh, okay, but get, you're gone. You're gone. And we're back, and we're gonna open up on a sexy monk lady walking down a train track. Just you know, narrating. <laughs> okay, just <laughs> just to clarify how crazy this movie is. This lady, we will learn, is telling a story about a dream that she is in to a congregation we'll never see. And this is the beginning inner end cap of that. It's like she's doodly doing inside a beep. Very <laughs> confusing. <laughs> Eli just explained it and it still doesn't make sense to me. It makes less sense now that you've explained it. But yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, she goes, as I walk through the wilderness of this world. And it's like <laughs> she's walking on train tracks the wilderness is not yeah, the wilderness of the train tracks <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and by the way let's stop to appreciate just how bad the effects have to be in a movie before you can fail at smoke was blowing around <laughs> <laughs> not too well with that. they added that in post <laughs> yeah. also by the way she kept starting to plagiarize stuff yes. and then having to stop <laughs> yes it was the best she's like I dreamed a dream in time gone, but nope, nope. I, <laughs> I have a dream that one day right there in Alabama, nope, Why? nope, that's MLK, <laughs> fuck. Why do birds I suddenly just, appear? No, fuck, shit. Um, I dream of genie. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> All right, so yeah, so she's going to tell us about the dream that she dreamed 
And as she says that, we cut to a kid leaping out of a trailer with the cop from Benny Hill chasing him. <laughs> yeah. And the and the way, way, way overweight cameraman chasing both of them. <laughs> oh. Camera work done by motion sickness itself, oh. ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, it's like <laughs> steady cam, more like steady can. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you very much. I'll be here all week. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Excellent. <laughs> oh, so we end up with this fucking shaky ass. Scene, there's a chase scene through Waycross, Georgia is what it is. It's through my, my, sure. through my fucking hometown. And like, by the way, when I say shaky, literally there's a, just a dude with a camera in his hand running alongside these actors at full speed. <laughs> and it goes on forever, right? So long. Well, they obviously promised to use this guy who gave them the background song, his entire song. So the chase is super repetitive while his 15th chorus makes yeah. its way through. <laughs> By the way, that's going to be a running theme in this movie, just so you know. Pun. So, okay. Running. But eventually, theme. the kid gets away from the cop after minutes upon minutes of chasing, and he winds up in this church where he starts stealing these candle holders. Yeah. More, stealing more Les Mis also. <laughs> He's literally stealing candlesticks like Valjean. Yeah, but but they can't even do it right because they're they're like they're just wooden dollar store candlesticks. They're not like <laughs> they're not expensive or anything. Hundred percent those are from Hobby Lobby. Yep. One oh, I bet you're right. I bet you're right. Yeah. This is also the first time we get a look at this character's face, like a good look, and we know he's poor because they have smudged him. <laughs> yes, he's a fucking chimney sweep. But he does have braces. He has <laughs> braces! <laughs> Were those apocalypse braces? What? Oh, maybe maybe it's like socialized orthodonture in the post-apocalypse. Yeah, I want I was gonna say I really want to see the like Mad Max orthodontist who shows up with a flaming guitar, just like <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're gonna need these for three and a half years. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so so he runs in the the preacher lady from before shows up and uh she and she catches him. Now the cop that has been literally three inches away from him throughout this chase scene comes in and he's like, I'm looking for a kid just sort of in general. Have you seen him? He's like, I'm looking for a thief who's the exact same age as this boy here in front of me. He looks exactly like this boy. He is that boy, <laughs> but I can't seem to find him. Where is he? Wait. He just thinks this is some random kid wearing the exact same clothes as the person that he was chasing. Also, there's lots of follow-up questions about, like, they live in a desolate junk wasteland, but there's still an active police force? Like, yeah. is there a backstory to that? It's a really weird universe we were in. But the, but the lady lies. She's like, nope, he is my apprentice. He's been here all afternoon. You must have been chasing some other kid. And the cop's like, all right, well, I guess I must have been chasing some other. That These are not the droids I'm looking for. You're right. And he leaves. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have seen Don't Fuck With Cats, but this is how good cops are at solving crime. So, yeah, I will be leaving. I will be leaving. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, why did you do that? She says, it's act one. And there, we had to have sort of a meat thing. And then we learn, as if this world wasn't already confusing enough, that this child doesn't know what a book is. Right. He picks up a book and he goes, so what are these things? How do these things work? <laughs> He's like shaking it around. What's a boak? <laughs> I love. So. Yeah. Everything else from this society has remained intact, like in the world building of this movie. We've still got modern clothing, law enforcement, organized. There's churches. The mm -hmm. cop is wearing sunglasses. The kid has braces, <laughs> all this stuff. He's wearing a book bag, but. Yes. I don't know what books are. <laughs> what the fuck are books? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so she explains what the what books are. He goes, oh, cool. She says, by the way, my name is Aptronym. What's yours? <laughs> her, her fucking name is Evangeline. His name is Christian. <laughs> Hello. I, get used to this shit. I'm Evangeline. Uh, <laughs> do you have a name that's not subtle? And he's like, no. <laughs> No, my name is Chris Fable. It's short Literally. for Christian. 
And we'll go and go and meet Hope and Faith soon also. Yep. <laughs> Jesus. I like to think that both these characters had the name Christian, and so she had to fake it day of shooting. She was like, I am Christian. And he was like, nope, I'm Christian. She was like, I am Don't say Christian. Evangelical okay. Christian. Okay. It's <laughs> <laughs> fine. We'll ADR something close to that. <laughs> So, yeah, so so they meet and she says, OK, you're my apprentice now. Come on back on Monday. And he's like, no, because I'm bad. I'm not I haven't turned good yet. It's still early in act one. And he goes to run off. Now, he stole a bunch of books when her back was turned. Right. He took a bunch of her books and he goes to run off. But now his backpack is filled with the books that he just shoved in there. So the kid, the actor <laughs> can't run. And it's amazing. <laughs> A tremendous amount of this movie will be defined by this kid supposed to be bearing the heavy load of the Pilgrim's Progress, but the child actor not being able to run with heavy thing on his yeah. back and just being like, eh, 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 eh. You know what would literally hold you back? A bag of Bibles. Fuck, this fucks up our thing. <laughs> yeah, right, right. All right, so, but now he, so he runs off to return his booty to fucking... Apocalypse Fagan. <laughs> Apocalypse Fagan! One of my favorite characters. And let me just throw this out there. Tuxedo in the Apocalypse? Bold choice. I admire <laughs> okay. it. Okay. Okay. Question. Uh, yeah. Fagan Wonka. He's dressed like a ridiculous <laughs> idiot. What year is it in this movie? Because we saw like the cop was like a 1920s constable yep. from, from London and now this we, Fagan's wearing Wonka clothes, but people have like modern sunglasses and ski goggles for no reason. Nothing makes <laughs> sense. What year is it? Yeah, the movie won't be sure. And to make it worse, the year the movie is made doesn't put any of those things in context. Nope. <laughs> it's like a 2016 movie, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was <laughs> no relatively idea. recent. Yeah. I would have thought it was from the 90s based on <laughs> just watching Based on the it. effects. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's done a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Caitlin, one of the hallmarks of our show is cell phones from a decade earlier than the movie was shot. <laughs> 2010. Yeah, right. No, okay, yeah. So we were, yeah, we were we were prepared for this kind of shit. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get some Skyping on Commodore 64s later. It's yeah. very confusing, <laughs> timeline-wise. Cassette tapes will show up for no discernible reason. Yeah. Because they're awesome, Noah. Well, they'll okay. be reason. All right, okay. But yeah, so so but he's bringing his books back. He's like, hey, Apocalypse Fagan, I got all these books. This preacher lady told me they were valuable. And he's like, that sucks. You suck. I hate you. Books are terrible. <laughs> and, then, and then they burn all the books. He doesn't know what books are either. Yeah. Well, well why would he? Right? <laughs> it's pretty sweet that they burn the books, though. Like, that's that's actually a great use of Bibles in the apocalypse is like <laughs> fire barrels for sure. Well, they couldn't afford fire barrels on this shoot? They went with a CGI fire. <laughs> well, they weren't allowed to destroy those books, you see. Oh, I see. 100% that's why they couldn't use yep. real fire. Oh, yeah. Good. Really good point. Yep. <laughs> and then, okay, we cut to Chris's, and correct me if I'm wrong in the description here, Oriental Opium Love Nest. Yep, that is an accurate description. Hmm. Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah. And this is when... His friend, who we learn her name is Faith in a second, <laughs> yes. she walks into his oriental love nest and he's like, I wasn't masturbating with dozens of candles for mood. What? <laughs> you were. <laughs> you. A lot of candles for the apocalypse. He's using a lot of wax. He's going to he's gonna burn something, if nothing else. Yeah. I wrote my, my first note for this scene is, hey, Chris, a lot of open flames here in your tent, buddy. Like a <laughs> <Yeah>. lot. <laughs> a lot. Well, and also, okay, so we cut to him. He's reading the Bible. Didn't know what a book was a scene ago. <laughs> yep. And won't know how to read in the following, the scene that follows this. Nope. But there's a little sliver of time where he somehow learns how to read and then unlearns how to read again, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Does. All right. So, but here's the thing. I, I, I'll admit this. Like when I was a kid, when I was his age, sometimes I just look at the book and imagine a little dude running across the top of the letters so that I was like, my eyes were moving correctly as though I were reading. <laughs> Maybe he's just doing that. I, I guess that's Could fair. be, could be. <laughs> all right. So yeah, but Faith comes in and she's like, I like your books, by the way. I think they're pretty sweet. And he's like, okay, cool. You can be my love interest. We're both smudgy, you know, equally smudgy. <laughs> 
But hey, it means there's not one, but two ladies in the movie now. It's getting more <laughs> oh, right. Crushing it. The representation of women. This is basically Hurt Locker. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> All right. So then we get this goddamn weird ass fuck you dream sequence. <laughs> right? <laughs> That, like, the very next scene, it's like, hey, I like your Bible. And he's like, thanks. Someday I'll show you where I got it. And she's like, cool. And then the very next scene, there's an asteroid robot apocalypse happening. Oh, and these robots are... <laughs> they are it's a fun game that you can play as you watch this movie is, what 1992 video game did they steal this art asset from? <laughs> <laughs> I just couldn't believe this movie had a special, like a, an effects budget. I was like, oh, what? You can't afford, like, your your shot of a chase scene was a man running with a camera, <laughs> but now suddenly you have an effects budget? It is so hard to try to assemble the origin story of this film, right? Because, yeah, I mean, the robots are terrible. The, the effects are awful, but they're so much better than they should be given the rest of the film around them. Right? Yeah. What I can only imagine is that the three teenagers who made this movie were given $10,000 by their megachurch, which they spent on Diet Mountain Dew and Cheetos, <laughs> and then like stole some art graphics off the internet, realized they only had three minutes of movie, and so the rest of it is shaky camera shots of this kid walking. <laughs> that's a good, that, no, that's a good theory. That's a good theory. Yeah, so he wakes up from this dream. Well, so in the dream sequence, like uh, Iggy won't let, like they're him and Faith are trying to run away from all the robots, but Iggy won't let him go. And he's acting like there's nothing wrong at all. Yeah, the camera's <laughs> being operated via poi again. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just like, come on, we're fine. This, These asteroid bombs are a liberal hoax. Nope. And he gets <laughs> by an asteroid bomb. <laughs> We only just learned today that these asteroid bombs can hurt you when you're asymptomatic. So. You know how many flus have gone through here compared to asteroid bombs? Yeah, right. It's not even close. Yeah, exactly. All right. So the next day he goes back to that church, Chris does, and he returns that Bible. And this is where the preacher lady shows up and she's like, oh, hey, you want to learn to read? And he's like, no, I, I'm fine just staring at the pages. It's a, he goes, she's like, do you want to learn to read? And he's like, meh. And she's like, okay, well kind of the plot, so I would like you to learn <laughs> how to read. Yeah, she, he helps her. She's like, hey, can you help me uh, tip this bench back up? And she, he's like, yeah, sure. He helps her out, and she's like, okay, I'm out. That was the work I had to do for the day, <laughs> tipping we go. up that bench. <laughs> Good work, apprentice. You've learned a lot about evangelizing. <laughs> Great. It's mostly bench fixing. I really wanted her to Mr. Miyagi that later in the movie. Like the robots bearing down on him. She appears in a cloud. Tip the bench. Tip the bench. <laughs> He's just opening the book of acts and closing it. Acts on. Acts off. Acts on. Acts off. Mr. Miyagi. Well done, sir. Well done. Yes. No, that's pretty good. <laughs> All right. And then so she goes to leave and he goes, Hey, wait, can I tell you about my dream? And she's like, yeah, you know what? There's already a weird amount of sexual tension between us anyway, with you being a kid, so. Yeah, so Caitlin, for a little background, we have a rule here on God Awful Movies that you're not allowed to tell anyone your dreams that you aren't sleeping with. So I mm. interpreted this as this boy hitting on his mentor. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's one way to go with it. I mean, she's, she's pretty hot for a post-apocalyptic preacher lady. Two votes. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So, like, eventually, oh, oh and, and so he tells about the dream, right? And she's like, oh, you know what? Yeah, giant robots. That sounds just like the Bible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's, ex she's explaining. And, she's, and, and he's like, okay, well, how do you know all this stuff that you're explaining to me right now? And she's like, yeah, it's in the Bible, the book of giant robots. Yeah, yeah that's cool. <laughs> You're sure it's you don't know how to read, yeah? Oh, it's definitely in the Bible, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, there's way more shit in there about giants than you would expect going in, right? It's true. So, yeah, so he agrees to learn to read, and then we get this learning to read montage. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's nothing. Nope. That doesn't exist <laughs> as, as an action or a montage. So it's just a running from cops montage because they were like, oh, that is just, that is just nothing. 
<laughs> but also, okay, so his line of dialogue there was like, I'd like to learn to read better. Right. So he, apparently he already knew how to read. So maybe he was reading before in his van. And then also, like, wouldn't he then know what books are if he does sort of know how to read? <laughs> yeah, right. Like, there's so <laughs> much story logic that is abs- just absent from <laughs> this moment and the rest of the film. Yeah, there's like I said, it's it's real hard to try to piece together this world and its timeline and its chronology and its technology later. Oh, but so we get the learning to read montage and the being chased by cops montage to spruce it up a little bit. By the end of it, even the girl Faith is learning to read. Huh? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So, OK, here's my question. If a woman teaches another woman how to read the Bible in montage form, does that pass the Bechdel test? No, it doesn't. <laughs> Ooh, well, I, you know what? Maybe? Honestly, just in case it did, they made sure they had the boy in the background balancing a book on his head the whole time. <laughs> <Yes. you know? laughs> it might pass the Bechdel test, but it fails the Book of Timothy test because that's not. <laughs> oh, you're right. Yeah, no, it, it certainly fails the Bible test. Yeah. <laughs> what? She, how was she going to teach that little girl how to read that book? Yeah, right. Like, like we have to skip over this part. It's not. They get to the Book of Timothy, and she's just like, up. Oh, mm. We have to just be quiet. We have to. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So sometime later, he's in the church reading from the Bible and the preacher lady comes up and she's like, you know, we should probably flesh out your backstory, huh? (laughs) Uh -huh. Hey, you want to expose it? Let's expose it. (laughs) My favorite part about this is that he tells her information that's already been established. Yes. He's like, yeah, I steal metal (laughs) for this guy named Iggy. And it's like, yeah. We know, Chris, move on. (laughs) (laughs) This could be implied. But then he starts really fleshing it out. And he's like, he ran away from his dad. And he doesn't know if his dad could ever forgive him. He says, I bet the father that I ran away from would never forgive me for the sins I've committed. And that was the first time that I sprained my eye rolling it. (laughs) I wonder if my father would be into forgiveness Chris. (laughs) Chris. This movie's symbolism has all the subtlety of blues clues. I like how he slow rolls it, though. He's like, oh, I left my father. I don't know if he'd want me back. And she's like, I'm sure he does. And she and he's like, no, no, no. Before I left, I stole all his money and then I lost it. And she's like, oh, OK. He might not be like super <laughs> eager for you to come back, I'd Chris. I'd give him a minute. <laughs> Maybe shoot him an email first to see... <laughs> Can I admit something very embarrassing, which is that because I've never, I have basically no exposure to the Bible. I've never read the Bible. I don't know a lot of Bible stories. And even though this, like I now realize is very heavy handed in its allegory, it took me so long to realize that this was like, (laughs) like, I was like, Celestial City. Okay. That must be a real city. I like, it took me forever to be like, oh, (laughs) Celestial City is heaven. The father is God. God, like I just did not. It, I am. I'm embarrassed how long it took me. It was like the end of the movie, and I was like, "Oh, okay." Now, well, now I feel like an asshole saying, "Well, if you could figure out Blue's Clues, you got this." Yeah. So yeah. Well, no, no it's it's no, worse. I'm Our just... lives are so inundated with religious yes, imagery yeah, that right. we're walking around being like, "I mean, did you guys catch that Ephesians reference?" Yeah. Hey-o! <laughs> Religion has killed our funny, Caitlin. You're just the messenger. But this is marketed at Christians, and they've they're supposed to have read the Bible, but they they were supposed to see this and be like, "Oh my God, that is a subtle metaphor that yep. they get at the end." <laughs> yep. Yeah. So he packs up. He heads off on his adventure, and this starts with him going back to the junkyard where the kids live and trying to get Faith and and all his buddies to go with him. Right. If Faith's last name is not Miracle, I'm going to be furious. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no, Christian's last name was Seeker. No, it's Fable, isn't it? They've already given him the bullshit. I I can't even, (laughs) I can't even lampoon (laughs) this dumb shit. (laughs) Chris, not a real story. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, so now this is also where we first meet Duck, who is just a weirdly likable character. I don't know. Oh, the little boy. Yes. The, okay. the little newsy boy. He looks like a newsy. Yes. Yeah. The little newsy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Again, what year is this? <laughs> it's also where we meet, I'm going to say my second favorite character in the movie, Guitar Center Guy. 
<laughs> so we are introduced to a character named Stubbs, but increasingly and for the rest of the movie, someone that the people who made this movie met at Guitar Center will accompany characters, scenes, and even multi-scene arcs with whatever him just doodly doing around on a guitar. Yep. Oh. Yeah, no, we have to meet the hard kid. This is Stubbs. He's so hard, he has a switchblade comb. <laughs> and again, they're all smudgy. I just wanted one person to acknowledge the smudge. <laughs> Do we like having the smudge? Yeah, so, but okay, so these, uh, Stubbs is like, uh, hears him talking about going to Celestial City, and he goes, that's stupid. Your religion is silly. I think you shouldn't go there, right? That's us, by the way. That's what we look like. This, this kid represents <laughs> us. <laughs> and then they start fighting. The two kids start fighting. And that includes a lot of just punching right in the fucking face. Yeah. <laughs> Chris hits Stubbs so hard. And with the first <laughs> punch, the kid clearly got hurt. And he's like, oh, my God, I'm going to fight this kid back in real life. And they get into it so good. And Chris is immediately like, sorry, time out, time yeah, out, right, time right, out. Right. Cut, yes, cut, yes, cut, yes. Cut, cut, cut. <laughs> Very clearly. Yeah. I can't promise you much, but these children actually hit each other in the face and actually rolled each other down hills. <laughs> yes. Also, I was like gonna make the joke that Stubbs brought a knife to a punch fight because like he pulls out his switchblade thing at one point in the middle of the punch fight. And I was like, oh, he's got a knife. But then it, I was like, wait a minute, that's a comb. Why does he pull out his comb in the middle of the fight? It makes so little sense. Brought a comb to a punch? This is confusing. I don't know whether that'd be better or worse. What kind of comb? If you'd like to rank comb, punch, fan, fan, man, <laughs> rock, paper, scissors, in our ongoing escapade. Good old comb. Nothing beats that. <laughs> All right. So, the, but just then Iggy shows up, the apocalypse Fagan shows up and he says, where do you think you're going? And he's like, we're going to go to Celestial City. He goes, huh, there's like monsters and shit. You'll never make it, right? <laughs> but the kids run. Duck, the little dude, trips Iggy. They all run off, but Iggy has a dirt bike. Okay, but they've never seen one before? Mm-hmm. Because when he starts to chase them, they go, what's that noise? So, like... There's a lot of things that these people in this movie have been exposed to that they don't know the name for. Maybe post-apocalypse, they're just not naming stuff anymore. <laughs> it's unclear. Who the fuck knows? Also, if this production had access to a motorcycle, why didn't they just mount the camera on the motorcycle <laughs> and shoot the chase scene with that mount? Like, they had a way to make that shot much steadier and they just didn't do it. So, okay, so here's the fucked up thing is that I know from our previous experience doing this show that the guy who made this movie is listening to this goddamn episode right now, Caitlin, and heard you say that and is like, fuck! Oh, oh, we had, we the, did have that. God Oh, damn. we had yeah. wheels. They're like round, <laughs> roly things. Was the worst. <laughs> what, what? Say it again. I, I gotta rewind. We ELS. Caitlin, you're gonna get such a passive aggressive YouTube comment from this guy. Oh, I <laughs> just can't be ready. Wait. Bring it. Be ready. Slide into. I'll my have mention. you know it was my uncle's motorcycle, we and we could not drill it. into the handle. What am I supposed to drive that through the trailers? You just didn't even think of that, did you? The trailers doesn't make sense. More like Black Delta. <laughs> <laughs> so. All the kids, they stop and they're like, hey, guys, look, you know, we're doing pretty damn good so far, but we're never going to outrun Iggy now that he's on a dirt bike. <laughs> I wanted Iggy to catch up on the bike and then realize that, like, you can't really do anything at that point. That's like, not <laughs> what are you going to do from a bike? Like, jump off of it and catch. You, you, there's nothing to do there. Yeah, you're going to throw like, a net, a lasso or something. Like, who the just fuck? keep giving your speech. And they're like, what? I can't hear you from the noise. That <laughs> But Faith has a plan, which is apparently to sacrifice herself for Chris. Yep. Am I reading that? She's like, Chris, is give me your jacket. I mean, uh, why have a woman in the story unless she's going to sacrifice herself for the male hero? Mm. Yeah, right, right. She's like, let me jump in this refrigerator real quick. I can, I'll can, i take care of this. <laughs> is this a pass or a fail? She has a name. Did we win or lose? <laughs> <laughs> she's the only female and she's going off to die 
as a means of moving the male character story forward. I it's feel- positive. It's a positive <laughs> feminist message. It's I, it's good that how they die for us. She might as That's well helpful. jump in a refrigerator and land herself on top of Iggy as a misdirect. <laughs> <laughs> And by the way, when she proposes this I'll go sacrifice myself for your sake idea, Chris gives that like, you know, when the other guy offers to pay the bill resistance. You know, like, no, <laughs> Absolute. don't. don't, uh, don't yeah. do all right. I'm- Here's my jacket and all, but don't do that. Are you backing away? How you're out of the restaurant now. You're backing out of the restaurant. <laughs> I'm going to sacrifice myself for you next time. Let me, <laughs> let me, let me tell you. But everybody's like, all right, well, I guess faith is our only chance to be saved yep. from this situation. <laughs> yep. And that's what happens. <sighs> so, Caitlin, it's an allegory for the Bible. <laughs> oh, what? Hang on. <laughs> I don't see it. <laughs> All right, but then the narrator cuts in to basically say, skip ahead, skip ahead, skip ahead. <laughs> So and the oh so, so we got Duck the little newsy kid he's following Chris around now and the narrator is going like and Duck was there too he was a dowdy little asshole that asked too many damn questions <laughs> <laughs> I wanted Duck to be like I can hear you lady that's not that's rude this was the first time I noticed that oh is that Evangeline's voice like is she yeah. now the narrator of like. I wanted them to pan over and she's like in a tree just watching. (laughs) And Duck is there. He's annoying. What? What? (laughs) You can't see me. For a while, I was like, oh, is she God? Because she does have seem to have this like omniscient point of view. She she knows everything that's happening. But oh, I guess it's her dream, right? I don't understand. What's the plot of this movie? (laughs) Yeah, that that is the fucking $30,000 question right there, isn't it? Yeah, they don't explain that to you until the end. So you, you're you left to puzzle it out for yourself. Like, what the fuck is she? Why was she telling the story? She's definitely neither Duck nor Chris, right? <laughs> right. Very confusing. And then they fell down a hill, right? <laughs> like We watch these two children fall down a hill for a while. And if there is a better metaphor for Christianity than accidentally falling down a hill because you're too busy describing a city you have no proof is real, (laughs) I don't know what it is. (laughs) And how does this even, like, they're walking along and then a cliff sneaks up on them? How does that happen? Logistically, that's a little hard to imagine. Yeah, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure that when they're rolling down the hill and obviously they've switched out Newsy's kid for a stunt double, but that stunt double is like a full grown man. He is visibly an adult. <laughs> he very much man. is, yes. <laughs> X3, X3, I'm a Newsy child. X3, same person. Well, so weird as they put him in the same shot as Chris Fable, right? As the other kid who is rolling down the fucking hill. And he's so goddamn much bigger than him now. Yes. So. <laughs> But yeah, so they roll down the hill. They fall in this swamp. There is a very growly alligator in it, right? Much growlier than most alligators. (laughs) So he's stuck in the thing. Duck gets out and Duck's like, hey, I'll help you out of the swamp. Whoa, alligator, never the puck mind, man. Uh, Good luck. the best. I'm the fuck out of here. (laughs) I'm going to be the main guy in a different movie. I don't like this side (laughs) of shit. (laughs) Later. But then, okay, so now here's Chris and, oh, there, there's an alligator. How will he ever get out? Well, luckily, a goddamn random forest ranger kid shows up and pulls him out. The last park <laughs> ranger of the apocalypse. What? <laughs> yeah, I thought this was still Doug, and I was like, did he just fucking change into a Boy Scout uniform <laughs> on the spot there somehow? He's pulling him out. Oh, look, there's, well, a, there's a phone booth right there. This will work out great. By the way, this is one of my favorite moments in the movie because he pulls him out and he's like, he's like, oh man, how do most people make it through there? And the shot pans out and it's very clearly like a three foot wide puddle. And the park ranger's like, I mean, a lot of people just go around. <laughs> <laughs> and then, all right, he says, what is that monster? And the, the park ranger kid explains, you guys correct me if I've got this wrong. 
that that alligator is what happens when all the drugs and crime roll out of the city downhill. Well, yeah, it's the evil from the gays is what they're saying. I, <laughs> I don't see. think they those exact words, but that be- creates demon alligators is what they're going for here. Yeah. Wait, wait, ready for the really funny, cool thing that I um, wrote down? <laughs> you know, when drugs come to life and turn into a large reptile, like a crocodile, <laughs> more like crack odile because it's like crack <laughs> cocaine okay actually that's pretty fucking good thank you thank you thank you you haven't just guessed it on this podcast madam you have won heath and Wright's art <laughs> <laughs> it's an alligator. mine was stupid yours yeah, is better yeah. <laughs> all right so yeah so and then that kid dips the fuck out never to be seen again right the, the mm-hmm. park ranger kid pulls him out of the swamp says yeah, that's a drug alligator. Also, I like the Bible. Bye. That's it. Yep. Also, Duck will never be in the movie again. <laughs> well, we'll see him at the very end. But yeah. Yeah. But again, now, so here's the thing is that they don't seem to understand that, you know, if you base a movie on another like existing story, your story still has to make sense all on its own. <laughs> Right. Because this like this, you, if, if you already know Pilgrim's Progress, you know what this scene is. You know what it's supposed to represent. But if you haven't, this is some super random shit. <laughs> All right. So now we meet a man. Speaking of which, Jesus fucking Christ. Now- Fat pony. <laughs> Fat pony. There's a guy in this scene, but fuck that. It's Fat Pony here. It's amazing. There's there's no other possible reason for this scene other than they had access to Fat Pony and they were like, what are we going to not fucking use Fat Pony? It's the only good thing in our movie. Oh, so God. Good. Why didn't Fat Pony have more lines? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a cross between a pug and a horse, and it's fucking adorable. It really is. Yeah. I never thought I'd see a pony with a similar gut to my own. And <laughs> I have, and I love him. <laughs> oh, and the guy. Okay. So the pony is great. The guy, not so much. The no. guy is, is, first of all, he's dressed like a pimp in a yes. full yep. head to toe red suit, red hat to match his red face. His face is so red. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's so good. He, he says, Allow me to introduce myself. And I wanted Chris Fable to start roasting him immediately. Be like, oh, hello, you're in a whites-only cast of Dolomite? What do you got for <laughs> you're, uh, you're a jazz pirate? Jazz pirate? You're a pimp for that thick little horse right there? <laughs> but no? then, okay, but now he's going to introduce himself to us. And they try to do like their take on the modern major general, but they're terrible and have no talent. (laughs) Right. So it's fucking awful. You can barely tell that that's what they're going for. Nothing rhymes. It's like, and and again, it's just a window into the arrogance of this writer. He looks at this and he goes like Gilbert Sullivan, me, you know, pretty much the same, right? (laughs) Fuck. See, I thought, you know, I think there's some real talent there. He's, as far as I'm concerned, a jellical cat to bring the cat into the mix. He's like, he's doing his little song and then he's describing all of his items. And I was like, oh, this is like the jellical song. He's like, you know, instructional cat, medicinal cat, contraptional cat, historical cat, categorical cat, astronomical cat, celestial cat. Oh. Oh, and Fat Pony starts singing memories. It would have been amazing. <laughs> mm. We watched Cats for this show, and it was one of my weird, favorite, best, worst, best watches ever. (laughs) Incredible. If the listener's wondering where the hell that is, well, that was for only only for the patrons. You guys got to check it. That's behind the scenes (laughs) kind of stuff. So either either you have to like uh, subscribe to us on Patreon, or you have to wait until the next uh, pandemic or something. Many years. Yeah, the forty third week of this pandemic. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I'll eventually uh, drop that one too. So, okay, but this guy is like the salesman, and he's trying. To, he's going to sell Chris a map that takes him, shows him a shortcut to Celestial City. But and they haggle about this for a really long time before they the writer realizes he doesn't have any way for this goddamn scene to end. So it just ends. Yeah. He he obviously knows that haggling is like, no, I want this instead. But he doesn't understand that haggling usually ends in a compromise. So instead, the character's just like, 
I'll take that last thing you offered because then the scene is over. Goodbye. Yep. <laughs> yep. Which I think is the comb that he somehow got from Stubbs. Do we see him getting Stubbs' comb? No. Ooh, <laughs> does he take knife comb? Yeah, no, he, he, he trades knife he comb for the map at this point. Yeah, I was I was kind of curious about that myself. I And then I thought, oh, is he a pickpocket? Will that come back? Because <laughs> I was so naive <laughs> nope. back then. In Act 1, I thought I had such high hopes in Act 1. All right, so Chris wanders off with his map. We watch him walk through the woods, checking his map for a solid two minutes. <laughs> I wanted him to read the map upside down and fuck it up. Like, he just, <laughs> <laughs> the movie just ends in the wrong place. Best movie ever, just over. He's back in his hometown. Shit! Oh, all right, oh, whoops, start over. Right. Whoops, well, whoopsie. he can barely read. Of course he can't read a map. <laughs> the cuts are so confusing of this walk. I thought he was meeting a mirror version of himself, <laughs> right? Because he looks and then the camera switches and then he looks again and the camera switches yep. again. So I literally thought there was going to be a scene where he meets like spooky mirror Chris, but no, no, they just don't know how to shoot a movie. I wrote my, At this point, I wrote in my notes, this movie has been a very, very long 34 minutes so far. <laughs> oh, God damn it. We're 34 yeah. minutes into this runtime. Yeah. <laughs> It was also at this point where I was like, man, we could really use like a fellowship of the celestial city, like some other <laughs> characters who actually are there with him because like this kid is not charismatic enough to carry this story on his own at no. all. No, he needs fucking dwarf and an elf. He needs yeah, all the help Desperate. he can Sadly, get. Jesus isn't charismatic enough to carry the Bible by himself either. Yeah. So. That tracks. So, no, and this is some really, really bad editing here. The kid starts running around in the woods like he's scared from uh, of something. And it's quite a while before they realize they got to throw in some sound effects for us to know why he's running. So eventually we get these stompy sounds that he's running from, right? Like a big stompy giant somewhere. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, like the T-Rex from Jurassic Park yeah. got to show up. Yeah. <laughs> With like Jesus on his back. <laughs> hey kids we close to Ken Ham's Ark Park which yeah. way is <laughs> you got a map right there I see you have a map so he drops to his knees and starts reading his bible right because he's getting scared and he's like there's got to be something in here that will help and again like I said a lot of shit about giants in that book so it's not as crazy as you'd think so he reads about his bible for a little while he starts running again and then he comes out of the woods and there's like this group of hooligan kids there <laughs> Yeah. Uh, women, some more <laughs> women in the movie. Is, this movie is getting more and more That's feminist. True. I'm telling you, yeah. <laughs> such a good representation of women. Um, yeah, as to getting more and more feminist, hey, when you start at absolute zero, everything's warmer. So yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, I there agree. You have it. <laughs> so, but yeah, so he's warned some. He's like, hey, you know, look out. There's something coming from the woods. You should be scared. And they're like, eh, psh, quit mansplaining, which is why they're going to die. <laughs> mm, yep, must punish these women for not believing in Chris. Yes, that's, ex <laughs> like the, that's exactly how it plays out. He's like, hey, guys, you should run screaming in terror from here. And they're like, no. And he runs off. And then the fucking robot shows up. The giant shows up. Right. And again, all we hear is stomp, stomp, stomp. But the kids go running off. And we can see again, bad guy is not being shown. We're just hearing sound effects. But we can see each of these girls one by one getting plucked off by the giant that's behind him. <laughs> yep. And now he said a number of times that he's headed for the wicked gate. So at this point, he he finally gets to this gate. But damn it, if that giant thing isn't catching up, it's right on his heels. And just then, it all <laughs> fades to black. <laughs> Noah just added so much more suspense than this movie ever had <laughs> in that one sentence fragment just now. Well, thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, no, look, look, I, I, I'm pretty sure several kids just got eaten by a robot. I don't think that that was the kind of movie we were watching. So I need a quick break to recalibrate my notes. Uh, but when we come back, we'll talk about even more of the adventures of Chris Fable. I'll tell you this, Stubbs, ain't nobody going to keep me from the Celestial City. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Really? Sorry, Sorry guys. Re what? Uh, yeah. What, what's up, Faith? Yeah, what, what is it? It's just, um... What? You guys are just covered in dirt. What? We are? Yeah, I, I know we're like 
Dickensian and all that. But mm -hmm. seriously, it's just everywhere. Wait, like me too? Me and him? Especially you. You look like a pig pen. Wow. All right. Well, uh, let's go shower. And then we mm -hmm. fight right after yeah. that. Yep. You bet we will. Thank you, Faith, by the way. Yeah, thanks. thanks. Yeah. Sure. I'm touching it now. It's a lot. I can feel it. It's <laughs> gritty. You were so smudgy. So smudgy. Tired of looking through your mail like this? Bill, Bill, spam, spam, spam that weirdly pretends to be a check. You think that would be illegal? Death threat, Bill. And want to start looking through your mail like this? Bill, Bill, spam, Bill. Box of awesome, yes! Then why not try Bespoke Post? What's Bespoke Post? Bespoke Post sends you only the best stuff every month. And no matter what you're into, Box of Awesome has you covered. From style and grooming goods to barware, cooking tools, and outdoor gear, Box of Awesome has carefully built collections for every part of your life. Oh yeah? Like what? How about the Slumber Box, which comes with a bamboo lyocell duvet cover? Ooh, so cozy. Or how about the Julep Box, the classiest and most elegant way to make a mint julep at home? Want it? Call it. I want that one. To get started, take the quiz at boxofawesome.com. Your answers will help them pick the right Box of Awesome for you. They release new boxes every month across a ton of different categories. It's free to sign up, and you can skip a month or cancel any time. Each box costs only 45 bucks, but has over $70 worth of gear inside. Wait, we get all that stuff for just $45? You sure do. Plus, you'll get... 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter the code AWFUL at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com, code AWFUL for 20% off your first box. Box of Awesome. Turn your mail from this... Oh, man. ...to this. Oh, man! Ooh, Box of Awesome! And we're back. And I know maybe I did a little more than normal in selling the suspense as we were going to break there, but there's a reason for it. It's so that you, <laughs> the listener, could understand how terribly goddamn disappointing it is when the next scene is just him waking up and somebody going, wow, that robot almost got you in that last scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It turns out the robot is like out of shape. He's like, uh... I'm tired. And the robot collapsed, so it's going to be fine. That's what we learn right here. He's <laughs> he's in this this magical house with this woman, and the robot collapsed, and he's fine. <laughs> yeah, he did make it. The The movie just didn't have the technical prowess to show a gate opening. Right. That was beyond their capacity. <laughs> it was locked. They wanted to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have the key. They the director was the like, fucking Fuck. gate. They're like, I guess, I guess you could just black out right there and we can say later that she came and got him. <laughs> the person who owned that house was like, get the fuck away. I told you you can't film here. <laughs> okay, cut. So We got it. We got the gate. Yeah, so he wakes up and uh, he basically goes, so what the fuck was up with that last scene that made no sense right <laughs> and, and this woman who we've never met she's just like uh yeah no it really doesn't but you're here with me now so let's not dwell on the screenwriting but hey it's another woman we get well, there's so many women in the story now such it's getting more and in though even though some of these women are dying or getting kidnapped you know, we we add others to replace it. It's incredible. Um, yes. <laughs> but I also am like, oh, I guess only white people survived this yeah. apocalypse. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Uh -oh. Yeah. This was uh oh. This was white even for a Christian movie. Some of them have some blackface, if that's helpful. Is that <laughs> no, a little bit. Oh. They're 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 Justin Trudeau in it a little bit. Uh. Oof. The closest we get to an ethnic minority in this movie is a mustache. So, you know, it doesn't, it's not great. <laughs> so, not great. So he goes, what was that thing from that last scene? And she goes, it serves the ruler of this land. And he's like, that's just random exposition. Doesn't answer my question oh. at all, does it? Really? You think about what it? I'm getting at is, do you get a lot of giant robots? <laughs> that, like, I, maybe I wasn't specific. That specifically, is that a lot? You have to put that in the house disclosures. If you have giant robots, it's in the, it's like radon. But what I love is 
<laughs> they're trying to extend this Satan God metaphor yeah. thing into kingdoms, but it completely falls apart, right? It's like, oh, the prince tried to fight the king and the king won, but the prince is in charge and kills people. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's another, another, this is the second eye spray and I got it. At this point, I rolled it back so far I could see last Wednesday. Back when I had toilet <laughs> paper, it was great. It's so dumb. Yeah, she's like, there's a prince in charge now of this darkened area. <laughs> the land's evil now. I, I'd move, but, you know, property value's way down because it's a whole, I, uh, it's a buyer's I a, market. I took a balloon mortgage and now I'm kind of underwater <laughs> in evil land. <laughs> Makes perfect sense to me. I think this is good screenwriting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So somebody explain this to me. T tell me, am I am I wrong on this? When the two of these characters are standing out on the porch together, this middle aged woman and this thirteen year old kid, she tries to seduce this kid, right? Yeah. Um... <laughs> the bit on the back porch. Hmm. No, just me. She definitely has a like. You sure you don't want to stay a while? Moment. And he's like, I'm 12. And she's like, all right, have fun on your journey. <laughs> <laughs> she turns off, baby, it's cold outside. Sorry. Do that. Okay, all right, <laughs> do that. Also, the whole like, because she, she's been carrying this giant backpack the whole time, again, because it's Pilgrim's Progress. And she gives him the whole, you should leave all your belongings behind. All you really need is the Bible speech. But that's way more like self-serving when the person's saying it is staying behind where they're asking you to leave all your valuable belongings. <laughs> <laughs> Just thought I'd point that out for her. Yeah, I didn't even think of that. <laughs> so, okay. Time for more walking, which is great. The fucking narrator cuts in to remind us she's still there, I guess. <laughs> I wanted this dude to get passed by a hobbit who's just like, dude, start a fucking plot. Come on. <laughs> 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 All right. So he comes to a fork in the road. And he's like, hmm, I don't know. I'll take this path. And just when he decides on which path to take, a dude in a wooden birdcage tells him that's not the right path. <laughs> this character is a vicious attack on Heath and Rice. <laughs> <laughs> Also, okay, so he's in a cage. He's eating a rat. And I was like, despite all my rage, I still <laughs> ate a rat in a cage. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So here's the great thing about this goddamn scene. This character represents the evil of knowing shit. Yep. <laughs> right? That's what this character represents. The idea is that he's put himself in this cage of knowledge and now he can never figure out the right answer because he has too much information. <laughs> and the movie gets this wrong. He's, he's supposed to be like the scientist who's too, too all you know caught up in his own head with data and logic. And Chris Fable's like, come on, man, just get out of the cage and you know take a path. There's only two directions, the right way, the wrong way. And the guy's like, well, no. I mean, it's more than two. There are more than two directions. <laughs> what are you, and he's supposed to be Are wrong. you one dimensional? <laughs> what axis do you think you're on? Just the one? And I love how they tried to do like the, the like books are bad moment and yep. failed at that as well. He's like, I have to read my books. No bad spin on that. I don't know how to do a bad spin on. Because well, they're science books. Yeah, no, the character actually asks him, why do you need all of those books if you already have the Bible? <laughs> yeah. And yeah, and Chris says, the answer is right here in this book. Uh, I'm a nomadic orphan getting attacked by giant robots. I'm basically crushing it. So obviously <laughs> I've chosen a I know sweet the, book. <laughs> the answers. Oh. Yeah, yeah. But no, the scientist atheist and intellectual character decides to stay back and is imprisoned in his cage of knowledge. <laughs> so dumb. He's like, all right, I'm going to figure out a cure for the plague. And Chris is like, cool, I'm going to go walk in the woods. <laughs> Let me know when you're done. Yeah, strange, <laughs> strange that they don't seem to mind that cage right now in this exact <laughs> moment so much. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. All right. So now we watch fucking Chris walk some more. And then he comes, okay, he comes across this big cross. Now, they were going for cross-shaped hole in the rock, 
but the effects were, <laughs> were so they? bad. I thought this was supposed to just be a shadow. Okay. But this is so vitally important to me because the Pilgrim's Progress, the poem is all about like he's carrying his heavy burden. He's carrying his heavy burden, except Caitlin, you were not aware of that because you are luckily enough not to have read the Pilgrim's Progress. Right. So what the fuck did it look like was happening in this scene to you? <laughs> What was your experience? That's what I want to know. I mean, I, right. I, I was like, okay, I guess this is an entrance to a cave that is just perfectly in the perfect shape of a crucifix. <laughs> I like, I recognize some of the Christian undertones, obviously up to this point, but I was, I, I really couldn't make sense of a- any of this at all. <laughs> Feels like a cartoon train might come out of this cross. <laughs> Absolutely. Because if you don't know the Pilgrim's Progress, you're just halfway through the movie when the main character joyfully kicks his supplies <laughs> yes. away. Yes. I didn't understand why he did that. Correct. I don't <laughs> didn't understand his motivation. Also, like, this is true of the Pilgrim's Progress as well. But can we talk about how monumentally crazy it is to have your hallelujah moment halfway through your film. <laughs> right? He sets down his heavy burden and I paused it and I was like, okay, hour and 13 minutes left on the time stamp. Yeah, Here we go. Right. <laughs> well, don't worry. If things weren't making sense, don't worry. It's about to settle into a nice linear plot. Obviously, the next thing that happens is a uh, <laughs> sword-wielding cowboy shows up. Sword cowboy. <laughs> yeah, you know how cowboys are famous for slinging plastic swords. <laughs> yeah, right. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, he runs into a sword cowboy. So then it's that night they're having beans around the fire because, you know, it's it's cowboys. And there's what I think is maybe the most amazing scene I've ever seen in my goddamn life. This is the entire fucking scene I shit you not. Chris Fable eating some beans. He says, so um, do you? And the cowboy says, finish eating first. He goes, okay. <laughs> That's the end of that scene. That's its own <laughs> fucking cutaway. If a stranger told me to finish my food before we talked, I would be 1,000% sure they were poisoning. Poison. <laughs> yes. 100%. But he wasn't. It's made so little sense. It was just like, we're not losing that can of beans. No. <laughs> It reminds me of another moment that happens between Chris and Faith at one point where he's like, wow, I bet you have a story to tell. And she's like, yeah, maybe later. <laughs> End of scene. Right. <laughs> I'm a woman, so <laughs> probably not. not. And we get this weird little, we get a storytelling montage. He's telling Bible stories. And I just want to, I'm really hoping he's telling the bad ones right now. Yeah. <laughs> And Ahod did smote their children and all their geese and all their yaks. And she's like, ah. Oh. Hmm. How does that apply to us right now? But of course, the, the fucking stories that he's telling are little snippets de- designed to show all the kids out there how cool and adventurous the Bible is. Right? And I just want to say, as an atheist, I am also in favor of kids reading the Bible as soon as possible. (laughs) Keep us in those Patreon dollars. Read that book, everybody. (laughs) 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 All right. And then, of course, the cowboy gives Chris a sword. Yeah! (laughs) Yeehaw! (laughs) The craziest, (laughs) the craziest moment. He's like, all right, so uh, glad you enjoyed those beans. Here's your magic sword. Good night. No questions, please. <laughs> Why is it glowing blue? I said, I said no I'm questions. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, the next day, the fucking cowboy has to teach Chris how to sword fight. Oh, hi. <laughs> what series of deceptions led to this moment on film, right? Because <laughs> both these actors stand there and we, the audience, get to watch them realize neither of them knows how to sword fight. <laughs> nope. None sword fighting knowledge. But we still go through it pretty long. It was like lesson one. You already dropped your sword. See, I hit it out of your hand. <laughs> Lesson one, do not not have a sword in a sword fight. That's important. 
All right, cool. Lesson two. Uh, bad guys always attack left, right, left, right. They have to do that pattern. That's the rule. So you block left, right, left, right. Cool. And lesson three, you're going to go duck, jump, duck, jump, duck, jump, because that'll be the only other thing they're allowed to do is go up, down. And uh, yeah, that's basically also. Yeah, 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 so yeah, you're all good. Pretty much got it. He might as well stop it and be like, no corner traps. You're cheating. <laughs> <laughs> also, I don't think this counts as like a training montage because it just plays out in real time. Like there's right. no <laughs> condensed, condensed <laughs> time here. It's just all happening <laughs> it slowly. Oh, God, I wish Cecil. I have a we have a friend who's a who does actual sword fighting. God, I wish he was here to critique these lessons. <laughs> yeah, oh. What's the opposite of a montage? Whatever you're describing, Caitlin, that's what they've done here. It's just, <laughs> right. it's just a montage. montage. Yeah. So, wo, wo montage. So, um, yeah. So, but of course, th this scene exists so that grandma can tell her grandson, no, no, there's sword fighting in it. Right. This is this is this movie is fucking harsh. Jesus is cool. There's swords and shit. I, I wrote in my notes. I guarantee you, the most drama associated with this production was when whoever owned these decorative swords he bought on the Home Shopping Network saw the nicks <laughs> they caused in them with this montage. <laughs> Hit on the flat. You hold it flat. God damn it. Ah. Oh, so yeah. So he now he he. It's been three minutes. So he knows how to fucking. Sword fight. I wanted a giant robot to just walk up and shoot him. Be like, <laughs> that helps. That's not helpful. All right. So and now he knows how to sword fight. Uh, the cowboy's done his job. So he climbs back on his horse. Which is, by the way, not a fat pony. How dare that horse not <laughs> Absolutely be no. a fat pony? We know you have a fat <laughs> pony. You have access to a fat pony. Now, oh, you know what? Now uh, that, that fucking snarky message about un his uncle's dirt bike and shit is going to be like, well, also we only had the pony for one day and we had to decide. <laughs> I'll have you so, know that fat pony died of a heart attack walking up the <laughs> hill. <laughs> fat pony got a better job and was like, mm, that's, that's all. That's all. You just get the one scene. <laughs> fat pony became a podcaster. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, guys? Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. <laughs> fat pony. <laughs> all right. So, and oh, by the way, before they part company, the cowboy hands Chris Fable a slingshot. And he literally says, just in case you run into any giants in, I don't know, act three, <laughs> perhaps. Should we do a slingshot shooting montage that's not in all <laughs> montage at all? Should we just shoot slingshots <laughs> at giants? I don't know. I wanted him to just walk over to the cliff that he threw all his possessions down and throw the, throw the sword and the slingshot. <laughs> Cowboy be like, what the fuck, man? No, 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 no. It's not. It's some stuff is, our stuff is good. It's just, you have to, I, I should have been more clear. Didn't really make any fucking sense now that you. All right. And fucking now Iggy is on 80 television sets with Satan. <laughs> Keep up, Iggy. Keep the fuck up. <laughs> Iggy not being able to figure out Zoom. That's amazing. I so wanted the scene where Satan teaches Iggy how to use Zoom. <laughs> okay, so now you're just going to click the link I sent you. Uh, okay, do I need to download anything? Or just, nope. I just, nope. I click it. Shouldn't okay. need to download anything. Just like go ahead it. and right. click the link. Okay. Oh, it says I can call a number. Do I call it from the computer? Like nope. How is, nope. That it. That's that the happen? the phone version. You're just gonna uh -huh. click the link at the top of the email. Don't oh, ignore okay. the phone. Got it. Stop. Got it. All right. Uh, it says it wants to open Zoom, like on my camera. Nope. Nope. It's just gonna be on your computer. Just, oh. You just click it. Oh, and it well, opens okay. It on. Well, I'm on my phone. Do I need to be on my? Do I need to be on my computer? What? Yes, you need to be on your computer. But, uh, but then how am I going to call you? Are you sure I'm you're not, not the devil, Iggy? Are you maybe the devil? <laughs> oh, that's just been Eli's life for the last couple of weeks. I bet. <laughs> and has that's my life. Okay, so yeah. Now this is Satan, but we're only seeing him like from behind and obscured, like, Inspector Gadget style. 
And it's supposed to make him more intimidating, which they have to do something for that because he has the whiny rich kid voice. <laughs> right, like this is yeah. supposed to be Satan, but he has the whiny rich kid voice. <laughs> he sounds like Jared Kushner explaining that the masks are his, all his. <laughs> 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 like Michael Keaton trying to be angry Batman. It doesn't work. Yeah, no. exactly. Exactly. Trying to do the pit of despair. <laughs> <laughs> But Satan tells him, like, hey, man, you got to go find that kid. That's, like, pretty much the whole, that's as close as we've got to a plot, goddammit. And Satan tells him, he's like, don't worry, I'll let you borrow my ride. <laughs> Foreshadowing. <Okay. laughs> Which is, I'm like, if that ride is not a 1992 Subaru Outback, I'm going to be furious again. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, wait. Okay, Caitlin, a lot of people have 92 (laughs) Subaru Outbacks, and they're cool. (laughs) They're awesome. Wait, I can't can't imagine you know what kind of vehicle he drives when you wrote (laughs) that. I know, somehow Eli set you up to know that, and now you're making fun of me directly. (laughs) All right. The 92 is a great model. It's like a 68 Margot. Of Caitlin, what if we backs. told you that it occasionally catches on fire if we want you back? <laughs> <laughs> at least once when I've been in the car and at least once when Eli's been in it. Separate occasions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, and not the same time. <laughs> it's it's awesome. It's like Satan's vehicle. It's on fire, of course it would be. <laughs> fucking sweet. But... But Iggy's like, all right, I'm going to take your ride. I don't really understand. Is it a goat that's also a motorcycle that's also on fire? Is that what it's going to be? Because that was what you had last time, and it was very inefficient. Little foreshadowing. We'll find out later. But now if you're thinking, man, it sure has been a long time since there was walking. I got good news for you. Uh, This is the part where fucking Chris comes across the lava river. And if you're thinking, wait, <laughs> this movie doesn't have lava river budget, does it? No, it does. It does not. It does have. not. No, it had writers that were like, the floor is lava. This is so fun. Hey, you know what? What if we write it into this scene right now? <laughs> <laughs> by the way, Guitar Center guy is going fucking crazy in these lava shots, by the way. Oh, yeah. he's just doing he's doing his absolute best. Which all begs the question, what's the plot of this movie again? What are, where, <laughs> that's a great fucking question. <laughs> like, literally, the, the plot of this movie is platform video game mask, right? He's trying to get from left to right. That's it. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And, okay, so he gets past the lava. He hears a scream. So he runs up to the top of the cliff and Faith for reasons that will never be explained, is hanging off of a cliff by her fingertips, about to fall into the lava. All right, but they're reunited now. He he found his faith. <laughs> and her face could not be smudgier. It is as smudgy as... <laughs> yeah, ever. wherever she's been, she got more smudgy. Yeah, for sure. you know how, like, in some movies, like, they let the... the, the, the female lead gets more and more attractive as they go or more and more scantily clad as they, they did that but with smudginess with faith for some reason <laughs> yes. smudginess is the attractiveness of christian cinema That's i guess what I've always so yeah said. <laughs> yeah so and and then he turns to her like they get away and he says to her he's like gee i thought you were and, and she's like no no i'm fine don't say it and he's like but why did you think she was dot 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 right like what gave you that impression like it said in the movie that that she was dead, but yeah, he didn't see that scene. Earlier in the phone call, <laughs> Iggy told Satan he had killed her, but he wasn't there for that. Is he watching the movie? Oh, you know what? <laughs> From what I'm understanding about Zoom's uh, security protocols, he may have been listening in on that call. Oh, that's what it so is. So that it could now. be it. That actually explains mm-hmm. that. Or Evangeline's <laughs> just been following everything and she just fills everybody in. Oh, there you go. <laughs> No, no, it's okay. I'm omniscient third person. It's all right. <laughs> so. I'm on a different axis entirely, but I can tell you about stuff. <laughs> so I've got left, right, up, down, up here. It's crazy. All right. So now, you know, just in case you were getting sick of just watching Chris walk, we now get to watch Chris and Faith walk. Ooh, feminism. <laughs> There's a woman on the screen. <laughs> and now it's time for a vine attack. Oh, God, yeah, the path takes them right through fucking off-season Halloween decoration wood. The <laughs> vines, because you know what's exciting is vines. <laughs> vines are pretty exciting. They weren't going for Evil Dead, 
but they accidentally did Evil Dead. I just want them to know. <laughs> yeah. All right, so the vines grab them and start dragging them down yet another hill. So much of this movie is throwing children down hills. <laughs> <laughs> also, I feel like the director of this movie, like that scene where Chris throws his burden down the hill and it's tumbling down the hillside forever. I'm like, oh, I bet the director wishes that bag were a child. Just a child <laughs> being flung down a hill. In the original screenplay, that was just duck. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That kid followed him the whole way, and he's like, "You know, you've been quite a burden this whole time." <laughs> it's a stunt bag that's way too big. That's clearly not yeah. the same bag. Ah, <laughs> uh, so yeah, so these vines grab him, and and they're dragging him around, and then very late in the game, it occurs to Chris that he has a sword. Yeah, right. Like, so vines are not going to be super problematic. Right, so he's like, I'll use my sword, and he chops them off. He's like, oh, Faith, I got you too. And she's like, no, no, they're, they're very small vines. Like, I'm good, just I just break, use my hand. Break them, yeah. <laughs> it's, <they're laughs> also very small. it's not intimidating. Uh, uh, this is a collector's small. item. It'll triple in value, I'll have you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, and then they have to run from the vines, but they have to run for an absurdly long time because, again, they promised a Guitar Center guy that they would use his entire solo in this scene. For sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. All right, well, I'll tell you what. We just watched Adventurous Vine Chopping. I need a break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will people pick up this DVD because it looks kind of like a Harry Potter thing? Will the packaging compare it to the Chronicles of Narnia? Did I learn that from a very angry IMDb review from a dude whose girlfriend fell for it? Find out the answers to these <laughs> questions and more when we return for the laborious conclusion of The Adventures of Chris Fable. Will Satan realize he's underutilizing the giant robots? Yeah, <laughs> just right? use them instead of very small vines. And David, well, he done threw that stone as hard as he could, and Goliath fell down dead. Wow! And that story is in this book. It sure is. It's a good book, don't you think? For sure. Tell me another. Okay. Um. Have you heard the one about the time God killed some kids for making fun of a bald guy? He did? With bears. Or or maybe you'd like to hear about the Whore of Babylon. Painted and comely, was she? Um, maybe just another adventure story? Okay, all right. Well, how about the greatest story of them all? The greatest story of them all? That's right. What if I told you I'd kill myself in the form of my son so that I wouldn't have to torture you forever? How's that sound? Yeah, I'm going to go. Suit yourself. I'm burning hell forever. What? I said suit yourself. Said, suit yourself. <laughs> and we're back for more walking. Chris and Faith just... Ooh, just walking more, walking. Right. How will we know if they're on a journey if every scene doesn't open and end with the characters walking into and out of frame? Oh, my God. How did they get to the scene? Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Okay. Right. okay. But then just all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they're attacked by the birds from Bird Dem the bad guys from Justice League, <laughs> Scorpion, the horse. Like, what the fuck was this? I think it was supposed to be the scorpion horse logo. Was it right? really? I oh. feel like they did a real bad job doing that with terrible CGI, but I think maybe that's what they're going for. I think this was just them being like, kids like it when things get squished. Yep. Squish. <laughs> it's it's definitely what you said, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's exactly it. They, they, they were like, oh, what else do kids like? Bugs? Kids like bugs? So we get several minutes of Bug swatting action. Yep. And then he says, well, that's all of them. Kind of a pointless okay. and expensive scene, but... It's <laughs> huh. a weird day. How much Mountain Dew do we have left? Because this was expensive. <laughs> right. I'm just like, what's the theme of this movie? Is it like <laughs> finding God is hard because of all the bees, vines, and drug crocodiles that get in the way? <laughs> <laughs> yep, absolutely <laughs> correct. Is this about Pitfall? Well, yeah. <laughs> is this an allegory for the video game Pitfall? Well, but so that's the thing, though, is that when so much of your, so many of your allegories are so heavy handed, 
when you just have one that's just bugs are cool, then yeah, you, it leaves us like scratching our heads for an awful long fucking time. Yeah. Well, Faith and Chris scratched their heads too. They're like, that was weird. All right. I don't know. Let me ask you something. Are we in the fucking Bible? <laughs> <laughs> but then things get even scarier because now they have to walk through early evening. <laughs> Rhymes. And Guitar Center guy is just going crazy in the background. And he's messing up, too, right? He's trying to do <laughs> a finger pattern on a guitar, which is pretty well known when you're, like, first learning electric guitar. But he keeps messing it up. So it's like... No, that's Iron Man. That's no. Nope. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> you can do the opening to enter Sandman. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, okay. Do, but no, then no, the no, narrator no. cuts in <laughs> to point out <laughs> that, like, you know, that value of the shadow of death line sounds pretty hardcore if you think about it, huh, kids? Huh? Yeah. Huh? And and they're both like, yeah, you know what? Let's walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I don't know. Like, what <laughs> the fuck could go wrong? We're always talking about it. We might as well just do it. <laughs> it's just the shadow, right? It's and just the, the shadow. <laughs> And then how much evil are you fearing? Because like I'm a little, I gotta be honest, we're not supposed to, but I uh, stuff keeps happening. All right. So now just to fucking top it all off, we just had a random vine attack followed immediately by a random bug attack, and now exploding tree attack. <laughs> what the I fuck? I thought this was lightning. Okay, yeah, yeah, no, it's, no, yeah, the lightning's hitting the trees and the trees are exploding around them. It's okay, guys, no, they're still running through the woods, but it's from different special effects now. <laughs> different scene. <sighs> I miss the fat pony. <laughs> oh, you and me both, sister. <laughs> At least the movie should cut in and let us know what's going on with fat what's pony now and again, right? What's happening with the pony? You and me, Caitlin, we get together, we pitch a fat pony solo flick. It could be uh, it could be Chris Fables, Hobbs, and Shaw. <laughs> yes. Fat pony in the drop then the rock Dwayne Johnson. Everyone will see that movie. That, no, that oh, is true. What that a is, duo. That is absolutely true. Fat pony dies during filming and they have to do this really <laughs> depressing thing. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so all right, so. They get away from the tree lightning and the bugs and the vines. They sit down in the field to have a chat, but just then Iggy shows up in Satan's ride. Which is not a 92 Subaru Outback. Nope. Disappointing. No, no. Nowhere near as cool. <laughs> it is. That's what you meant. A fucking Dr. Seussian hot air balloon. A hot air balloon, the least <laughs> convenient vehicle to catch a person in. Well, that, that, you know, after a dirt bike, but yeah. <laughs> well, but that means Satan, the prince yes! of darkness, was like showing up to stuff being like, ha ha, I am the prince of dark. Just give me a second. Just give me a second. The controls are, it just really just goes up and down. You guys, take right. 30 to <laughs> just gotta 40 you guys walk over here. I have a speech. You want to go. <laughs> I'm going to. I'm going to throw a rope down and I'm going to need one of you to hammer it into the ground for me. <laughs> and then 45 minutes later at the fastest. And I cannot emphasize okay. that enough. Do you have I'll a hammer there. in there? For us to use? Nope. I can't have, ah. I cannot have anything in here or it just flips over and it would falls just the flip, fuck right? Down. Yeah. Yep. You should get a 92 super. <laughs> 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 If anyone wants to propose in this thing, however, it will be medium. <laughs> or a 92 All right. Super Rap, eh? <laughs> All right, so he now, uh, and Iggy pulls out, he's got this little, like, Saturday Night Special crossbow. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I'm going <laughs> to kill Faith if you don't come with me. And Chris is like, I'm not going to come with you. And Iggy's like, you realize you're the hero, right? You don't, <laughs> do you hear it? I hear it. Faith gives him this fantastic look where she's like, oh, we're doing two sacrifices of me in the same movie? That's <laughs> <laughs> cool. I, I, I feel like I remember you saying you were going to sacrifice you yourself for me next. I, right? No? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. What, what happened? Who paid last time? I feel like it was me. <laughs> <laughs> remember your card got declined. And so... Via PayPal? You were going to Venmo me. <laughs> 
But, hey, you know, to his credit, Chris does sacrifice himself for her this time. Iggy shoots her with the crossbow, and Chris jumps between her and the bolt. But it <sighs> hits his Bible. It doesn't <gasps> kill him at all. Bullet blocking Bible. Oh, such good screenwriting. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, no, no. We thought that was uh, Chekhov's Bible, but no, he fired the fucker. <laughs> so, yeah, so Iggy's like, oh, you bested me with the old Bible blocking trick. I guess I'll leave. No, I'm fucking with you. I have a, a lasso in here that I'm going to lasso your leg with as I leave. Now, let's let's be clear. He has a sword. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, he brought a sword to a, a hot air balloon and tiny crossbow and lasso fight. <laughs> <laughs> he does not try to cut himself down for like 10 minutes. He's just like, if only I had a sharp weapon to to slice through this rope. Right, 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 right. I have a sword. I'll cut myself down now. He's he's <laughs> using the sword to block crossbow bolts like a goddamn <laughs> Jedi. He starts sawing the rope with the Bible. All right, this is not... <laughs> what? My, which thing... <laughs> but eventually, when they get all the way through fucking Guitar Center guy's song, he thinks to cut himself down, right? Mm hmm. Uh, which leads to more walking. Well, more honestly, walking. Jesus Christ. Okay, so, but, but this time it's bridge walking. That's totally different, right? Ooh. Yeah. Uh, music yeah. note here my pastor says I sound just like Dolly Parton. <laughs> my note here was. They started to do another walking montage, realized that this was the third fucking act, which is why the music just abruptly fades out. And we end up in a real scene where they're like, oh, fuck, we can't do montage again. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where they come across, I'm going to say, a neon gingerbread prostitution plex. Yeah. What are we looking at? <laughs> this this was bananas. This yep. whole thing. When you're Christian, the temptations of Satan are a black light poster, everybody. <laughs> oh, God. okay. This gets... So, yeah. So, they see this little weird gingerbread house in the woods. And Chris is like, let's go check that out. And Faye's like, I don't think that's a very good idea. But they go check it out anyway. He's like, it says not a trap on it in neon. What are you talking <laughs> yeah, about? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but then... Okay, so they go inside to discover... All the filters in the FX program that they hadn't used yet in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, be a little honest. I watched this movie in chunks, and I started to watch this move this chunk while I was super high, and I had to turn the TV off and watch it again when I was um, sober. <laughs> I watched this completely sober, and I had to turn the TV off and not watch it. <laughs> this was so, like we will not be able to describe the weirdness of this goddamn sequence because we have to use fucking words, right? We watch mm. disturbing movies. Like seriously, this is my goddamn nightmare. I, I really had to walk away. I, I don't like anything that happens for the next like thirty minutes of movie. It's so rough. So we're in this weird <laughs> rotoscope cartoonish thing. It's, it looks like something that like your family would make you participate at a, in at a fucking mall kiosk in the 90s and then they <laughs> mail you a goddamn VHS tape six weeks later or something. It looks like that. And I went to Auntie Anne's and got a bunch of pretzels. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have we met Luke yet? Because this is where we meet yeah. Luke, right? Yeah, this is... Okay, so yeah, Satan is t taking them through his CGI paradise of gingerbread bordello-ness or whatever. Okay. <laughs> but as he greets them, he throws out nine mini Snickers max, right? The first <laughs> thing he does, it's the sad... He's just like, oh, everything your dreams desire. Ow, are these Smarties? Yeah, they're Smarties. <laughs> <laughs> one Are these each. Fun size. Fuck Take you. one. <laughs> one. So. I have all nine. I'm gonna eat these. <laughs> it's so dumb. And this is this is like the big moment where they're like, we know what kids love, and this you know proprietor of the gingerbread house who we're gonna learn the identity of eventually. I won't spoil it for you. <laughs> He's just like. 
Chores are stupid. Puppies are great. Candy, karate, gay sex. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, these are the temptations of the fucking devil (laughs) for him. And it's just cartoony bullshit. So the kids are all like, you know, they're like, hey, like, you know, not that we don't appreciate the stuffed puppies and the lack of homework, but um, why are we all wearing these goofy ass looking sunglasses? Right. (laughs) Yeah. The kids are like, oh, um, what happens if we take these off? And I want the devil to be like, well, your face melts off like the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark. But (laughs) another disappointment. None none of the kids question that, right? None of the kids are like, oh, why didn't you design a fun palace that doesn't blind you if you don't wear protective eyewear? Silence. (laughs) Well, and every, so this is electricity and everything like in the background is like batteries and, and plugs and shit like that. And I'm just like, wait a minute, is this movie anti-electricity? Is like, is this scene about the dangers of electricity? Of neon, yes. <laughs> Spoiler alert, it kind of is, yeah. And honestly, Scranton, Pennsylvania describes this pretty well as like a fun house. <laughs> The electric city. Yeah, yeah. They call it that because the electric city. (laughs) There's the scene where he's like, what do you want, kids? Anything you want. And the kid's like, can I have a bike? And then he just sort of lamely pulls a shitty bike from (laughs) where it was quote unquote hidden. And he's like, all right, a bike. There you go. That was easy. You're you're passing. Most of the time they get. All right, give me back the Snickers. This is ridiculous. You guys are being assholes about everything. Hand them back. (laughs) So, but yeah, so the, but the key here though, is that, uh, you know, faith wasn't so sure about this, but Chris sure is having fun, not giving a fuck about Jesus anymore. So we watch like faith disappears and we watch Chris and Satan, the proprietor of this whole thing, Luke fly through this computer generated, terrible animation for, I don't know, three minutes or so. They also, they fly, they surf and they practice karate together. I, I no idea. No idea. I love I'm just looking at the notes here and there's so much what the fuck what am I watching what in God's name am I looking at? Yep. <laughs> this is, this, I literally left for a while here. I'm not I'm not like exaggerating. I had to walk away. <laughs> For a minute, I was like, is this another training montage? Or like, what? what's happening? But <laughs> right. I'm just having fun. <laughs> what is he learning to do? <laughs> we literally watch him watch TV and eat snacks as a part of this montage. Yep. yep. <laughs> oh, that's, I missed that. Okay. Yeah. And I just want to throw this out there. I had a very sad moment because... I had Twizzlers and vegan cheesy poofs just as on the camera. <laughs> Chris had Twizzlers and, and cheesy poofs. And I was like, all right. Eli, I wrote my notes. Man, that dude is eating cheesy puffs and Twizzlers at the same time. Mad respect. That's some next level snacking. <laughs> this just turns to camera. I guess you could say art imitates life. Hmm, Eli? <laughs> all right. All right. So, okay, so we cut off that montage for a second, thank God, for a scene where Iggy is reporting back to Satan. This is the scene where we unceremoniously murder Iggy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? Like, like he dies at the end of this scene, right? In this kid's mm-hmm. movie. Okay, just making sure that we're all on the same page here. Yeah, Satan's like, hey, man, you know that kid you were supposed to catch? Did you catch him? He's like, no. He's like, you know that kid you were supposed to kill? Did you kill her? And he's like... No, and he's like, all right, I'm going to kill you with a giant robot, (laughs) motherfucker. And that's it. That's that whole scene. Then we cut back to Chris, who's now, I guess, all the way in the grips of cartoon debauchery. (laughs) (laughs) He's he's sitting there with his chips, and he's got, apparently he's shoving chips in his face and drinking a soda through a Twizzler, but he's got chocolate smeared around the edges of his mouth. This is some impressive shit, right? Like, this is absolutely what Eli would look like if we got to take time off because of the uh, quarantine. Yeah, and again, (laughs) just to emphasize, this is exactly what I looked like as I watched this scene of this movie. Just, you know, without the fast metabolism. (laughs) Like... If Chris had slowly grown a beard and a microphone, I'd have been like, okay, okay. Two points to you, Christian movie. Eli's picking a Cheeto off his 
fucking belly. Chris does the same thing at the same time. Yeah. Jesus Christ, what's happening? <laughs> I'm getting stranger than fiction. Camera pans over to Fat Pony getting stoned next to him on the couch. Ah! <laughs> All right, but now a uh, fucking preacher lady shows up on the couch. <gasps> She's back. Just when you forgot that character existed at all in the story, she comes back. <laughs> and baby, that's feminism. Oh, the woman yes. is back on screen. <laughs> Good feminism, eventually remembering a female character. <laughs> and I have so much, again, like who the fuck, what? purpose does she, she's the narrator the narrator just came in sat down on the couch and said all right i feel like this scene has gone on long enough right <laughs> right i unclipped myself from the y-axis i'm on the x with you now, <laughs> <laughs> hello is she maybe like a metaphor for the holy ghost like what is who is the holy ghost in christian mythology whatever they needed to be in the moment i think you know oh, I think it's a bit of a catch all. there's such a long youtube comment right now <laughs> Caitlin, <laughs> his comment just got so much longer <laughs> oh really who's the holy ghost well let me tell you clack clack clack, clack all caps <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right but yeah so she's like hey man you need to get up and and, and get this movie mo going and he's like no i have twizzlers and cheesy puffs so fuck you <laughs> Watching Netflix, uh. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and then after unsuccessfully trying to convince him to do shit for like three minutes, she's like, oh, by the way, also, um, your love interest character was kidnapped and is being held by an evil person that's torturing her. And he's like, oh, well, damn it. Why didn't you fucking say that at the beginning? You could have led with that as opposed to cheesy poofs aren't good for you. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> So and but then we cut to Satan. He's he's hanging out with imprisoned faith. This, by the way, this is where I, I solve the riddle of why it's electricity land, because in Matthew chapter five, Satan is referred to as the light bearer. Oh, Get it? See, yeah, the bearer wow, of light. That's yeah, good screenwriting once again. <laughs> yeah, no, they <laughs> nailed this. Shit. Morning star light <laughs> made of photons. Same thing. Yeah. Nailed it. Yeah. And they can't show like a torture scene or anything. So Satan just sort of stalks back and forth in front of this teenage girl going like, do you have any idea how many followers I have on Twitter? <laughs> 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 All right. So and we, we cut back to Chris with Preacher Lady. She's trying to convince him to take off the silly glasses, right? <laughs> and he's like, will all this cool stuff go away if I take off the glasses? And she's like, yeah, but you have to take them off anyway. And I thought to myself, oh, my God. This is a direct preview of the eventual VR porn intervention that we're going to have with Heath, isn't it? What? That's true. I mean, there's a lot less struggling and buckets of water and he's clothed. <laughs> but yeah, other than that, yeah. I can stop whenever I want. Like if I, if I wanted to stop if I didn't. Just because I have it on right now, I don't have to see anything in the podcast. <laughs> Audio. I'm taking it off right now. I'm taking it off. I'm taking it off. Well, it's fine. Yeah, I'm, fine. So I'm fine. I'm fine. Send me, fine. Send me a picture of you with that off. Right now. I, no. <laughs> <laughs> he sends me his graduation picture. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah. But, so, he takes off his glasses because that was all the rotoscoping they could afford. And he finds himself in a hamster wheel. Yeah. <laughs> How is it that you could think that you were sitting down but actually be walking in the hamster wheel? Read some Descartes. This is, that's basic philosophy. Oh, okay. <laughs> and there's another girl there. And I only point this out because what's amazing is this was obviously supposed to be Faith, right? But then she got captured. So they were like, oh, and then Faith, to oh. <laughs> <laughs> there's, um, <laughs> never mind. There's just a new girl sitting there. We will need a similar word to faith. Oh, God. Mm, yes. Faith. This is where we meet um, Hope. Her name is Hope. <laughs> hope. And <laughs> Hope, I imagine her last name is Destiny or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> hope Destiny McGuffin. Yes. So, <laughs> so yeah, and, and Hope would like to be in this movie now, too. And he's like, yeah, no, that's cool. That's cool. I guess, okay, so she took her glasses off, too, and realized that she was in a evil hamster wheel of demise or something, whatever, yeah, right? Right. 
But that would make a female character uh, kind of smarter than everybody else. <laughs> so Chris <laughs> has to fix that right away. She's like, yep. Yeah, so good job. Um, I'm the first to escape. Maybe I'll escape from this whole thing now and take you with me. And he's like, I'm male. I take you with me. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Just the adventures of hope, destiny, MacGuffin? No, Chris Faber, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Also, I realize it's kind of like the, it's like the Matrix, right? Like the devil yeah. just red pilling everybody. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I want anti-feminist devil castle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure we'll find it eventually. Like that's what we've been looking for this whole time. For it's called YouTube. Episodes. I found it. It's called I the found White it. House. Yeah, I was yeah. <laughs> All right, so yeah, so him and Hope escape, right? Because he's still got his sword. I guess Satan didn't think to take that when he put him in the hamster wheel. So he takes out his sword and he just starts, they walk into a room filled with pipes and gauges and start just hacking shit up in a dungeon where all the prisoners are effectively blindfolded. That seems like a <laughs> fucked up plan. Hey, yeah. towards the end of kids movies, things explode, right? Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's just, let's just start fucking hitting shit, right? <laughs> So yeah, so now everything's explodey so they can run off and find Faith. I feel like you find Faith and then make everything explodey, but hey, what the fuck do I know, right? I'm not even a Christian. Especially because like there are other characters who we've seen before. We've got the motorcycle girl gang wearing leather. They're back. We've got Duck. Duck is there. But yeah. then I feel like they blow up the building with all of them still inside, right? Yes, yeah, right. Megs. We we have a big building explosion a minute later, and we never like see all those characters running out of the building beforehand. <laughs> we do not. We do as a matter of fact, if I recall yeah. correctly, we never see any of those characters again after that. Mm -hmm. no. Chris and Hope are just like, yeah. Well, I mean, we got to keep the economy going. This is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Well, those, if you think about it, those were the kids that were most susceptible to being exploded. Yeah, so. Being exploded by a robot. Die, so. <laughs> so. <laughs> and then, yeah, the building explodes and they run, they run out the hope and uh, faith. Sorry, wait, I, I almost missed the moment where they passed the Bechdel test. Amazing. Um, yeah, because they run <laughs> right? into faith and he's like, uh, faith, hope, hope, faith. And hope says to faith, hi. Hi. That counts, right? That... <laughs> Flying colors that passes the Bechdel test. That's an incredible, we have a winner. meaningful pass. Feminist Christian cinema. <laughs> so, hey, you look, compared to what we got on Slate for next week, yes, yes. So, yeah. That's true. Yeah. So, yeah, Chris is just like, hey, all right, uh, faith, chastity, virtue. This is hope, guessing, credulity. Great. <laughs> Bechdel test. Nailed it. Caitlin. Caitlin, did you see that? Yep, nailed I saw it. it. I loved it. Incredible. All right, guys. Well, uh, hmm. We're almost Christian. <laughs> We've had Heath in a cage. We have Caitlin's podcast. We've had Eli's eating habits. Yeah. Why don't we get Noah's computer graphics and we're good to go? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Speaking of which, now it's time for the giant red eyed robot to show up. Like in the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Or like you know in how? Pilgrim's Progress, yes. <laughs> Either like, or. You know how Pacific Rim was the Bible? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come on, Heath. The Bible makes more sense than Pacific but Rim. No, that's Don't true. That's true. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, okay, so then the 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 bag Satan, he walks out and he's in his giant robot. He's controlling the robot, Johnny Sacco style or whatever. And he says, hey, let me show you show off all of these cool guns and flamethrowers and shit my robot has. And you can see Chris going like, fuck, yeah, man, pocket Bible doesn't help if you hit me with the flamethrower. Shit. <laughs> Shit. Now that Shit. I have demonstrated the full power of 1994 After Effects, will you surrender? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I mean, we can hear that you're trying to do a speech, but can't really understand the words. You're clipping a lot. Can you get like a, <laughs> like a decent condenser mic in there? I don't know. You're Satan just for your robot. <laughs> But yeah, so he's like, uh, he's like, all right, Chris, I need you to spy on the celestial city for me and help me get uh, spare parts to build more robots. And he's like, no. And Satan's like, what? All right. And then he shoots them all with a missile and they explode. <laughs> if the credits had come up here, this is my favorite movie. <laughs> just throwing that out there right now. Well, right. But don't worry. It turns out that that explosion just winged Chris. 
<laughs> it was a flesh explosion. Just Don't worry about them, it. Yeah. <laughs> but Faith is fucking dead. Mm-hmm. Right? But so so <laughs> nope. the female character dies in order to move his storyline along. Again. Yeah, that's feminism. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but don't worry, guys. His replacement girlfriend is right there already. They <laughs> had already introduced her. Yeah. Hope's right there. She's like, ah, oh, that sucks. But you don't know, forget Faith. I'm yeah, I'm kind of close to a synonym, right? So like, <laughs> we're fine. It's Obama's thing, right? So yeah, so now they have to run from the giant robot. It's shooting at him. Don't worry, it has fucking stormtrooper aim. But eventually it corners them at a clip. And I'm like, oh, that director's going to throw your asses off of that cliff. I know he's going to throw them <laughs> kids off that fucking cliff. Yep. And Satan's like, oh, you got so close. Look, just on the other side of the river there, Celestial City. And he's like, we can't look. We don't really have the budget for that. He's like, right. No, we'll just imply, though, that it's over on the other side there. It's literally the scene from South Park where the two angels are watching. <laughs> oh, this city is so amazing. Yeah. Wow, if only you <laughs> I could wish see. you guys could see it. It's so cool. It was honestly not till this point when I realized that Celestial City is a m- 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 metaphor for <laughs> heaven. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so Satan's like, you'll never make it. You have to bow down to me. And Chris is like, yeah, I'll bow down to you. But just to get that slingshot out of his shoe. Remember from before? Not really? Okay, well, there's a slingshot. Or the cowboy gave it to him. Anyway, so he slingshots the giant robot right in the fucking eye. And that's apparently all it takes to take out that fucking robot. Yep. Shouldn't have powered my robot via the windows. That's on me. That is on me. (laughs) So, okay, so then, like, Satan crawls out, Luke crawls out, and they have a sword fight, him and this kid, which means that, like, we watch this grown man and this 13-year-old kid have this fight where occasionally they will punch one another, (laughs) which is a (laughs) fucked up thing to watch. It's pretty (laughs) excellent. Also, there's, like, lightsabers, sparks coming off their swords. Why? I think they literally did that because they think that, like, that's what happens when you hit things together, not because <laughs> lightsabers are supposed to be lasers or whatever. <laughs> oh, geez. Well, I'll tell you, speaking of the, the fucking sabers there, one thing I can say for certain about this movie, the actor that played Satan brought that sword from home. Sure. Okay. The fu- <laughs> and 100%. him unveiling it was an incident on set. He had it in a violin case. It was handcuffed to his wrist. <laughs> He starts screwing it together like the pro with the pool cue. All yeah, of a sudden right. he's a hustler. <laughs> and correct me if I'm wrong, Hope is just watching this, right? Yep. Yes, 100%. In case you were curious, like, is the female character who didn't die, is she perhaps doing anything in nope. the scene? Mm, not so much. Not so much. <laughs> nope. There is, there is, by the way, a fucking... Slingshot not being used here. Just yeah. Wanted her out. to pick up an unused bag of cheesy poofs. Just be like, what? I ain't fighting. <laughs> <laughs> but in case you guys weren't thinking this movie was feminist enough, <laughs> it has the Thelma and Louise ending. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, Caitlin, just to fill you in, mm-hmm. the Pilgrim's Progress, the story and the movie we watched, ends with him dying. Right. Yep. So the pilgrim sure. like drowns and that is the end of the pilgrim's progress because that's the final thing you need to do to be with Jesus. And I was Drown? so excited. Yeah, he drowns. Well, die. What? You have to die. He dies. Yeah, that's how yeah. you get to Celestial City. Oh, sorry. It's a metaphor for Jesus. I, I, I got lost in the amazing plot. No, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so when these kids jumped off this cliff into a body of water, I was like, Please let this movie end with the protagonist jumping to his death. <laughs> well, <laughs> metaphorically, that's it, right? Like, that's what's yeah. supposed to have happened in this story. And when they, because they, like, he, he jumps in and then we have him, like, getting pulled out and put into a boat. And Faith is there. But we know that Faith died, right? So, like, the movie's not being super subtle about that. Those two kids just jumped to their death. Because <laughs> right. yep. the director wanted to heighten heighten things from throwing kids down a hill, like tumbling down a hill, to throwing them off a cliff. 
Yeah, right. No, that's, that, the progression <laughs> of this movie was just ever steeper shit to throw kids down. Yeah. <laughs> and so they jump off this cliff and they get saved by, you know, a fisherman with yeah. a fisherman's mm -hmm. net. Mm -hmm. Fisher of men. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And I really wanted it to just be like an actual fisherman who's like, ah, the net. All right. <laughs> and he just yells up to Satan on top of the cliff, like, hey, I got more kids. You want to come down and just grab them? <laughs> I got a customer. Wait a minute. You, you run these guys off the cliff. Yeah, they always jump. I don't know why. I think they're going to be fine. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, and then, okay. So they go to heaven or whatever. And then we cut to this preacher lady the, who has been apparently telling this story to her congregation the, old, the whole time, which means if you think about it, that this fucking congregation walked in, the preacher shows up. She turns to all of them and she goes, guys, I had this fucked up crazy dream last night. Let me tell you all about it, right? That was their <laughs> Sunday sermon. Oh, I wanted so badly for someone to raise their hand and be like, sorry, question. In your dream, you were the wise guide to the hero? <laughs> <laughs> That's your yes. dream? Yeah. <laughs> well, and then after they reveal that it was all the dream that she had and the story she's telling, we cut back to the movie, the, the, to the universe that was just her dream to wrap things up, right? Like Satan gets out of his, his robot and shit and he's like walking towards the, the back towards his uh, Electro Bill or whatever and all the kids come running at him. I'm like, oh my well, God, they're going to go over the cliff like lemmings, aren't they? So <laughs> according to this movie, she just like nodded off asleep during that sermon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. ah, sorry. I had to see a postscript about the devil. Uh, also, these kids, <laughs> by the way, it's perhaps my favorite special feature in a movie we've watched in a really long time. There's one kid at the back left who is, shall we say, full-bodied, who is very much not running at the devil. He is <laughs> walking to the devil. <laughs> He's got those cheesy poofs, does he? Yeah, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? That's the fucking finish line. Far more arduous journey for the people on our side of the screen. I got to be honest with you. And those characters died at the end. So, but we made it. We made it to the end. Caitlin, thank you so much for suffering alongside us today. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much for having me. I had such a blast. <laughs> Truly. Awesome. Glad to hear it. So, And if our uh, if our listeners want to hear more from you, where, where should they go? You can uh, check out the Bechdel cast. Again, that's my feminist movie podcast uh, that, you know, also figures out if movies pass the Bechdel test, which I am now tempted to cover the adventures of Chris Fable. <laughs> um, this Might monumental well cinematic masterpiece that's so important to <laughs> American cinema. But yeah, check that out. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Caitlin Durante. Awesome, awesome. And of course, we'll have... <laughs> this movie needed William H. Macy to, like, pass the Bechdel test, getting him extra time or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, and of course, we'll have all of that linked in the show notes as well. And, well, that's going to do it for our review. What? You sound different, audience. You're the one that sounds different now. Well, that's going to do it for our review talking. of The Adventures of Chris Fable. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet, because we still need to tickle you with anticipation. So, Eli, tell us, what's on deck? Well, Noah... When times are darkest, when we rely on medicine to keep us safe and alive, it's important to remember that medicine is also 100% trying to kill us with fluoride in the water. Oh, God for fuck's it. sake. We'll be watching the documentary from the guy who was in the electronics department of Race to Witch Mountain, The Great <laughs> Culling, Our Water. <laughs> it's on Amazon Prime. I'm going to go grab some anti- cavity fluoride mouthwash for spite. <laughs> All right, that's a hell of a setup. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 243 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Caitlin Durante for hanging out with us today, and a perhaps even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful, and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. If you enjoyed this show, by the way, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing A, The Citation Needed, D&D Minus, and The Skeptocrat, available wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres 
Torres. Tim Robinson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slot, Nicole Bill, Travis Allen Myers. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright, Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions, promising to work harder in another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club Club. Everyone at Evangeline's Church went on to die of coronavirus. <laughs> Deserve it. Fat Pony shot us an email and eventually got the spin-off movie we all need. <laughs> Iggy kept asking if everyone would be okay with switching to Skype. Everyone was not okay <laughs> switching to Skype. The man in the cage is now a skeleton in a cage. <laughs> Still cooking that plastic that's rat. Science. Excellent face. <laughs>Oh, yeah? Like what? How about the slumber box? Which goes, <laughs> sorry. I mean, I just, I'm looking over a Vaio Cell Duvet disguise. cover for a second, Listen, making sure I got that. I get a question too. I'm being fucking questiony with it. <laughs> Ty. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.